Hi, this is Steve from Propeller Warehouse, back again with episode five of propellers for the E-Group uh, range uh, from 135 horsepower to 400 horsepower. There's a pretty big range of horsepower groups, um, obviously that um, as time goes on, the, the horsepowers just seem to get bigger and bigger. So do the boats here in Australia. Um, so what I'd like to explain in this episode is really why each and every one of you con contemplating repropping really needs to get advice, professional advice from uh, a propeller company who has a range of propellers to cover all of those horsepower groups. So one of the most um, perplexing type of uh, uh, questions you always get, and, and, and it's, it's quite confusing for a lot of boaters, somewhere between the six to eight metre range, as to what diameter and what pitch. And, um, and of course, it's a lot more complex than that. And I'd like to break this episode up into a couple of horsepower groups that are dedicated for, or where we have propellants that are dedicated for those horsepower groups. So the, the E group that we fondly refer to is really the large gear case of four and three quarter, uh, 15 spline. It's been there out there for years and years and years. There is quite a bit of interchangeability on those, um, on those shafts, ob obviously. We always run the new interchangeable hub systems, which means that propellers like this can be used on different brands of outboards by just choosing the correct F number or the correct hub kit for that particular propeller. So getting back to it, you know, there's um, in Australia quite a lot of uh, 5.75 through to six, six and a half, seven meter type boats that are swinging uh, propellers on engines predominantly around that 150, 175 and 200 mark. So Honda's got the, the, um, the V6 gear case on the 135 and uh, that's a little bit unusual because most of the uh, 140s in the Suzuki's, the Tahatsu's and a lot of other engines, um, ha uh, they're the smaller, the, the smaller D group propeller. But 150 is incredibly popular, Yamaha 150, Suzuki 150s, 175s. These boats predominantly go better with a three blade. I'll say it again, they go better with a three blade on those 150, 175s. You need a lot of torque to push a four blade. Of course you can put a four blade on it, but whether you're going to get the, the best overall performance out of that boat is you know really debatable. Three blade um, have been made specifically for those 150, 175 and 200, especially the four cylinder 200s. Um, and those propellers are, in our range of propellers are called Stellars. They're a 14 and a quarter diameter. And we have an example of that just here. So this is a Stellar blade. 14 and a quarter diameter and then you'd put that on a 150 any day of the week. If you step up to 175s and 200s you can go to the 14 and 3 quarter diameter. So of course they come in 15, 16, 17, 18, all the way up to 21 pitch and left and rights. So the blade area is, is a lot smaller than what you'd expect to put on a 250 or a 300 horsepower. So the blade area is commonly called DAR, or area ratio, diameter and area ratio. So the 150s and the 175 props are generally about 15% smaller blade areas. Um, so it's horses for courses. You select the appropriate propeller blade area for a particular boat with a particular horsepower group. Stepping up into the 200s and sometimes 250s and 300s, we're going up in diameter. We're going up into the range that we called Saltiga, um, very commonly used on uh, 225 
uh, and 250 Yamaha, Suzuki's and Hondas. Um, in a three blade, there's probably not a lot of um, other uh, propellers that can match, you know, what that can do. The inertia is a, is a classic example. It's, they're very similar blade geometries to an inertia. Um, I've seen it in the last 10 years where the propellers from OEM have got better and better and better. So aftermarket have had to step up and really using uh, similar blade geometries um, as the OEM, as the inertia, the uh, saltest and, uh, sorry, the uh, um, salt water series that Yamaha use. Um, and it's really then just about price. Uh, so the quality is always there. The interchangeable hub system is there. And it's really just a matter of finding the right pitch. Again, it's really important to um, go to a website, find an expert analysis form, and get some advice, be armed with all the information. So before you even go there, know what your current prop is now, um, know what your maximum revs are, know what your rev range is, your cruising revs for your, for your, uh, your cruising revs for your cruising speed for the liters per hour that you're using. So adding that extra dimension and all the uh, chart plotters and pretty much all the uh, late model motors have got all of that data, including engine temperature, which, which tells you if your engine's laboring or a little bit or not compared to a particular pitch. So having all that information before you go online and um, putting all that data down is most important because people like me need to see a reference point of where, what you've got now and how we can better it if we can better it. So, We've talked briefly about the 135 Honda. They will always run just the smaller diameter propellers to make the engines happy uh, to rev to full revs of 6,000 revs. Um, the Yamaha 150s, the Suzuki 150, um, and the Merck 150 all still run around that same type diameters. I prefer the high rake Titans. That's my my, um, um, or saltest is what, what they're called. They're always a 14 and three quarter diameter. That particular propeller, the blades rake quite high. So when they rake high, they're more hydrodynamically efficient at boat speeds of at least 40, 45 knots, 50 knots. But they're the two choices to go to. Um, we have, again, four three blade propellers for the E-Group uh, range of outboards and we have two four blade propellers. So I think it's worth, um, interesting to, to, to note that this propeller here, um, which I call the Torque Master, been around for years and years and years, um, is still the go-to prop for 150 to, sorry, for uh, 200, 225 and especially stern drives especially Alpha 1 legs on uh, bow riders, on all your range of bow riders, it doesn't matter what it is, Bayliner, Sea Ray, Larson, Crown Line, it just goes on and on. So once you start to step up into the 300, 350 and 400, you need some pretty big diameter props. And the, um, the Suzuki 16 type diameters, we've been quite successful at uh, putting, uh, putting them onto uh, large Yamahas and uh, especially Mercury's um, in the C-Pro range. And, um, and of course, a lot of those bigger motors have a bigger shaft. They have an inch and a quarter shaft. So what I've spoken to you about just previous, just then, uh, we're all 15 spline, everything from 135 horsepower through to um, 300 horsepower, then it jumps up into inch and a quarter shafts where these little babies come out basically with a bigger, a bigger inch and a quarter uh, spline and they have 17 splines. Sorry, 19 splines on this particular one. 17 has got Volvo. Okay, so, so with the really big horsepower 300s where you've got them two at a time, maybe three at a time, you can mix and match with um, triple uh, motor systems. You can run four bladers on the outside and three bladers on the inside if you say had four engines. 
the boat manufacturer tends to like to um, uh, dictate how many left-handers you'll use on one side to a right hand because they know their hull better than anyone else and they tend to uh, uh, favour um, a particular blade area on the port side than the, the starboard side, something like that. So again, in 300 to 400, they're just getting bigger and bigger, 16 diameter, they weigh something like nine kilos. Um, and they come out in pitches, generally in those horsepowers of 18, 20, 22, and we're about to release soon 22s, 24s, 26s in the big boys and the 16 diameters uh, in four blades, especially for, well, military applications, uh, big, big charter boats, for example, repowers and that sort of thing. So it's a bit of a bit of a um, long-winded um, uh, talk on the on the E group. However, the most important thing is have all your your data, your facts, all the information, so that you can send us the information, picture of the boat, even so we know what the problem can be. If we can improve the uh, the, the fuel economy, because obviously fuel economy is a big thing these days, and there is a lot of boats out there that are not correctly propped. Um, I see it all the time with the shortages, with the um, with COVID uh, pandemic and all the rest of it, where um, a Mercury owner may have a 200 horsepower C Pro with a Vengeance propeller. Wrong prop. So. <laughs> Selecting the right blade geometry for your horsepower group for that boat is the name of the game. This concludes our, um, our episode five um, on this. If you want to um, email me with uh, any special uh, um, information you, you, you're not certain about or on your particular boat, um, my email address is uh, sales at propellerwarehouse.com.au and of course our website is propellerwarehouse com.au. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you again sometime soon.